Hello and welcome to the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel. Today's video will be a continuation of our Bible study in the book of Isaiah. And we're going to start with uh, chapter 10 uh, with the beginning with woe unto them that decree unrighteousness decrees and that write grievous grievousness which they have prescribed okay that have written misfortune for anybody the Lord is saying woe unto them and usually when that woe happens we see woe in the word of God there means there's a judgment coming to that person and he says that that write these different misfortune things to turn aside the needy from judgment from justice from receiving what is to do and to be done rightfully by them God is saying woe unto that person and to take away the right from the poor of my people that widows may be their prey and that they may rob the fatherless okay so these are woes now uh, that God is saying in reference to the tribe of Israel the house of Judah and the mix of Jerusalem okay around all the other nations also okay he says what will you do in the day of visitation and in the desolation which shall come from far to whom will you flee for help and where will you leave your glory okay so he's saying now that you're mistreating your own flock your brothers and that are among you because that's what and who he is uh, god is speaking of and in that time of help who will you call on you can't call on god he's saying you can't call on me because you're mistreating me okay because he's look because again it's like uh, we can look at the picture of this as like a group, a congregation. Let's just say it like that, a congregation of people. Um, and in that congregation, different saints are tr mistreating one another, okay? So to the ones that are mistreating one another, God is saying, uh, and doing these things that he's saying that is taking place, that uh, they're mistreating the person that is needy, depriving them from judgment, from doing justice from receiving what is right how they should be treated uh, um, for instance and, and this is just a harsh way of looking at a scenario in this particular manner where an individual may have been raped or whatever and instead of that person receiving justice uh, them that person receiving uh, no justice at all okay now that was a, just a harsh scenario but that's just what a, you know what came to me to speak of because that's how the way the Lord is looking at it, they're not, his people are not receiving justice, okay, as they should be from those within the same circle that they're in, because that's what we are. We are a circle of saints, congregation of people of the of heavens. And so he is saying when he's looking at Israel, they're not, those certain people within that circle of saint or children of Israel, because we're in the Old Testament, they're not receiving justice from one another, okay? And they take away the poor of my people, okay? They're stealing from the, the poor, the people that are poor, and that and they're making the widows a prey, okay? They're preying on the widows and on the fatherless, okay? So those are the different things that he's saying that are taking place within that atmosphere, and woe to those people that are doing it. And what will you do? Who can you call on for help if you're treat, mistreating me, my people? And then he says, and where will your glory come from? Is the answer is the question that he asks here. And then so he says, uh, without me, they shall bow down under the prisoners, and they shall fall under the slain. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is still stretched out. Okay. So Os Assyrian, okay, so for all of those different things in this verse is saying, is God still mad at them? Okay, because and who shall they bow down to? He says, to the prison under the uh, prisoners, those that place individuals into captivity. And then he says, going into uh, verse 5, he's going to explain what he's going to do. He says, O Assyrian, the rod of my anger and the staff in their hand, in my indignation. Okay, so Assyrian, the Assyrians are going to be his rod. Okay, whereas normally... He said, God said, and over in Jeremiah, over in uh, Jeremiah chapter 51, God said that Judah would be his rod, okay? Jacob, let's see, Jeremiah chapter 51, which is the house of Israel, same people, okay? Uh, Jeremiah 51, 
And then starting at verse 19, he says, The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the form of all things, and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name, for thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. For with you will I break in pieces the nations, and with you will I destroy kingdoms, and with you will I break in pieces the horse and his rider, and with you will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider. With you also will I break in pieces man and women, and with you will I break in pieces old and young, and with you will I break in pieces the young man and the maid. And I will also break in pieces with you the shepherd and his flock, and with you will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen, and with you will I break in pieces captains and rulers, and with you I will render, now that goes into who he was, as he was saying this, as God was saying that he will use Jacob in that portion to be uh, an enemy and to bring victory and to fight against the enemies that were coming up against uh Judah, Jacob at that point in time in Israel, he is saying that he would use them to be a battle axis to fight against them, okay? But in this sentence here, in this verse, as we go back over into Isaiah chapter 10, we can see that he's saying that the Assyrian is going to be the rod, okay? And it's going to be the rod that he's going to send against, he says here in verse 6, and I will send him against an hypocritical nation. And against the people of my wrath will I give him a charge to take the spoil and to take the prey and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. And he, howbeit he means not so, neither does his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and cut off nations and not few of them, but a lot of them. Okay. And then he says, uh, for he says, are not my princes altogether kings? Is not Kelno? as uh, Carchemish, is not Hamath as Arpad, and is not Samaria as Damascus. As my hand has found the kingdoms of the idols, and whose graven images did excel them of Jerusalem and of Samaria, shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Okay, so uh, wherefore, it shall come to pass that when the Lord has performed the whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high looks. Now, see, he's going to use the Assyrian to be his battle axe, even though he's puffed up and prideful against Judah. OK, but nevertheless, when he gets done using the Osirian as his battle axe, then he's going to, uh, as he says right here, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and destroy the glory of his high looks. Then he's going to destroy him. Okay. Because it was his pride and his high looks and his uh, stoutness that made him uh, basically war up against the house of Judah. Okay. God basically. Okay. But God says, since they are in rebellion, they're walking against me. So I'm going to go ahead and use him, use them while I can, <laughs> as the uh, battle axe in reference to their rebellion against me, okay? But then after I get done, I'm going to attack them you know, because they attacked me, okay? So we're just looking at the strategies uh, that God used and that he uses in the earth today uh, because we are in his hands. We're all in his hands. <laughs> in verse 13, he says, for he says, by the strength of my hand, I have done it. And by my wisdom, for I am prudent and I have removed the bonds of the people and have robbed their treasures and have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. Okay. So this is what he is saying that the Osirian is saying within himself, what he has done and how he's done what he did. And my hand has found as the nest the riches of the people, and as the gathering eggs that are left. Have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or even peeped? So shall the wet, shall the axe boast itself against him that had uh, chops therewith? Or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shakes it? Now listen, listen to what God is saying, because in this verse he is asking, even though, you know, he used them how he used them, God is, you know, looking at 
everybody's heart, okay, always and forever. And he's seeing how they have boasted and bragged and puffed themselves up to be the ones that are so big and bad and mighty against God, basically, because it's against the house of Judah in Jerusalem. And, um, but God is saying, how is he to come to that conclusion when God is the one that's basically moving and touching at all the strings? Okay, that's just the way to look at it because he's doing it all. He's, we're all in his hand. And he says, shall the axe boast itself against him that chops therewith, or shall the saw magnify itself against him that shakes it? As if the rod should shake itself, okay, against them that lift it, that lift it up, or as if the staff should lift up itself, as if it were no wood, okay? Basically, he's saying, now, if I had not given you uh, the authority to be able to go over and to destroy them, you would not have that authority, basically, okay? You would, but because I am using you to attack my people to, because of their rebellion, and that is their chastisement, that's why you're being used. But it's not for you to think that uh, you're doing a great thing. And he says here in verse 16, Therefore shall the Lord, the Lord of hosts, send among his fat ones leanness, and under his glory he shall kindle a burning like the burning of a fire. And the light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame. And it shall burn and devour his thorns and his briars in one day, and shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field both soul and body, and they shall be as when a standard bearer fainted, and the rest of the trees of his forest shall be few, that a child may write them. And it shall come to pass in that day that the remnant of Israel and such as are escaped of the house of Jacob shall no more again depend upon him that smote them, but shall depend upon the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, in truth. For the remnant shall return, even the remnant of Jacob, unto the mighty God. Okay, And in all doing all of this and allowing all of this, this is going to uh, manifest their repentance, is what God is saying. They will return unto me. For though they, thy people Israel be as the sand of the sea, yet a remnant of them shall return. The consumption decree shall overflow with righteousness. For the Lord God of hosts shall make a consumption, even determined in the midst of all the land. Therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts, O my people that dwells in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite you. Okay, listen to what he is saying in reference to how he is allowing them to go forward to attack them. And he speaks it here and starting in this verse. Verse 24, Therefore, the Lord, thus says the Lord God of, Israel, of uh, hosts, O my people that dwells in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian, for he shall strike thee with a rod and shall lift up his staff against you after the manner of Egypt, just like they were done in Egypt. For yet a very little while and the indignation shall cease, it shall be no more, okay, and my anger and their destruction. And the Lord of hosts shall stir up a scourge for him according to the slaughter of Median at the work of Orab. And as his rod was upon the sea, so shall he lift it up after the manner of Egypt. So in this verse, he's telling them, just as he did in Median, the slaughter of Median, and that's going to be similar to the attack that he's going to place upon the Assyrians. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing, okay? Because God coming in and the anointing is going to destroy every yoke of bondage that they have placed upon them, okay? For he has come to Aiath, he has passed to Migron at Mishmash, and he has laid up his carriages. For they, have, for they are gone over passage, and they have taken up their lodging at Geba. Rama is afraid, Gibeah of Saul is fled. Lift up thy voice, O daughter of Gilim, cause it to be heard unto Laash. O poor Anathoth, Madmina is removed, and the inhabitants of Gibeah gather themselves to flee. 
as yet shall he remain at Nob that day, and he shall shake his hand against the mount of the daughter of Zion, the hill of Jerusalem. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, shall rock the bow with terror, and the high ones of stature shall be cut down, and the haughty ones shall be humbled. And he shall cut down the thickets of the forest with iron, and Lebanon shall fall by the mighty one. Because even though he allowed them to go forward and be his ride against the house of Judah, as he tells the uh, house of Israel, he tells us that in verse 24, I believe it is. Yeah. Yeah. Verse 24, therefore, thus says the Lord God of hosts of my people that dwells in Zion, be not afraid of the Assyrian. He shall smite thee with the rod and shall lift up his staff against you after the manner of Egypt. Okay, though, even though he's allowing them uh, to destroy them, he's also, again, going back in and going to always replenish, revive, restore, and uh, revitalize the house of Israel, the saints of God, his people. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, heavenly father, for your mercy and grace. We thank you. Oh, heavenly father. That thank you for salvation. We thank you for Christ Jesus. And we thank you for your love. Holy God of heaven. Hallelujah. Oh, do we thank you for grace? Because see, we're not under these type of things that uh, the children of Israel had to endure from the old Testament. Um, thankfully, we're not under that the laws that they had to keep. Hallelujah. Now, we are under grace and mercy through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. We're not to take God's grace for granted. Of course, you know, the wrath of God will be kindled against an individual that does that. And we've read about that. We have that in the New Testament in chapter one. But hallelujah to the grace of God that keeps us covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, the mighty blood covering. Hallelujah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your blood of Jesus Oh, Jesus, hallelujah. All right, God bless you. God be with you. And I'll see you on our next Bible study as we continue to go forward with the Feed My Sheep Foundation Bible Study video channel.